And if you have a Bible, quickly turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, we are concluding a five-week uh, five collection that we started that really uh, is a collection around vision. Right. And this collection is different because this phrase and this title of this collection is not just something catchy, but rather we look at it as marching orders from heaven really for the next 12 months. And the collection title is called Play the Long Game. Play the Long Game. I, I don't want to sell out to play the short game. I want to trust that we don't serve the God of seconds, but we serve the God of seasons. And really, we've been building up to this day. Someone say this day. We've been building up to this day. This is the day that we actually put our faith into action. And this collection has a faith exercise. Once a year, we have a tradition, which is to bring uh, an over and above offering to the Lord. It's above our tithe, it's above our, above our regular giving. We call it the bricklayer's offering. According to 1 Peter, God is building his house that you and I are living stones being laid upon one another. That's really all we are in the kingdom of God. God, I'm a living stone, I'm a brick for Jesus. But I think there is a maturity or a graduation process when you say, I'm not just gonna be a brick, I'm gonna be a brick layer. I'm gonna help put some bricks down to, to construct and to build God's house. And, and this offering that we're gonna give at the end of this service today, you can go to vuchurch.com slash give. You can see all of the vision for 2021, five key initiatives. We're gonna do these things. I always say at Vu Church, you don't get to determine the vision, but you get, do get to determine the pace of the vision how fast we're gonna get there. It's up to you, it's our church, and we're doing it together. And, and today I'm, I'm pumped to, to conclude this collection. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter three, I wanna read a few verses, and uh, then I wanna, I wanna share with you. Scripture says, this is the Apostle Paul writing, chapter three, verse five, he says, what after all is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. Watch this, verse six is what I wanna lean into today. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God, someone say, but God. But God, but God made it grow. And if you're still old school and you still got a Bible that's not glowing right now, how many know that, that really the Holy Scriptures are on paper? They're, they're, they're not on your iPhone. They're not on, what you gonna do if you have to cast out a demon and your iPhone dies? Yeah, you need a real Bible. No, I'm kidding. Um, but but if, you're, if you got a real highlighter in church today, just that last part right there, but, but God made it grow. That's a, that's a good part to highlight. Sometimes I'm like, where do I want to highlight? That, I'm just going to tell you, highlight that part. But God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose. Someone say one purpose. one purpose. And each will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. I wanna conclude this collection uh, today. I, I wanna preach from the subject. It's in my heart today. I wanna preach from the subject. To God be the glory. Come on, somebody. To God be the glory. Uh, today on the front row, my wife of 14 years is sitting here. You look very beautiful uh, this morning, Don Cherie, and I'm so grateful you're here. But Don Cherie and I, if you don't know our story, we met, uh, I'm 36 years of age. She's a 30 something of age. Um, <laughs> we, we met uh, when we were kids though, at 17 years of age, we started dating, uh, started courting, fell in love and she was living in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I, of course, was uh, born and raised in the county of Dade. Um, I wasn't born here, but I like the lyric. Anyways, um, I'm from Miami. And so I remember the first time I went to visit Don Shree, I was, I was 18 years of age. And Don Shree's parents pastor an incredible church in Shreveport. It's called Shreveport Community Church. It's one of the churches that we partner with throughout the years and uh, just love her parents' work and the entire family, what they're doing there. And I'll never forget it because the first time I visited Shreveport, right when I got into town, somehow I stopped by the house. Dakota over here is her little brother. He, he was probably, I don't know, seven years of age. I remember he had made welcome signs for me in the house. How come you don't welcome me like that anymore? It's messed up. 
Behind him is David D. They're all masked up so you can't see these gorgeous, handsome men, but David D was about nine years of age. I'll never forget my first interaction with both these guys. Dakota didn't change his clothes for four days straight. And true story, David D was at baseball practice and he slept in his entire baseball uniform with the stirrups and all. I was like, these kids are ratchet. Anyways, I remember I, I quickly dropped my bags off at the house and then I was, I was taken, it was like, it was a quick exchange and I was taken directly to the church because that's how our families roll. It's like, there's a fu- we're at church just all the time. You know, like, why are we going? You don't even ask why you're going, just to church. And so I remember I got there and I, I'll never forget, I, I walked into the auditorium and this is before it had been renovated and changed, but Don Shree will know exactly what I'm talking about. And the thing that took me aback was when you walk into the auditorium, on each side of the stage are two statements written in gold letters. The first is one that you all know very, very well here at Voo Church. It said, the best is yet to come. I remember I read that. It might've been the first time I'd ever seen that statement at 18 years of age. I just thought, wow, this is powerful. This is profound. What, what a statement. The best is yet to come. It's something that we say here at Voo Church all the time. Because let me know, if you're in Jesus Christ, the best really is always yet to come. I know, but Rich, man, I've had a tough time. I lost my business with COVID. I know, but Rich, man, I've lost some people who got sick this year. I'm not discounting your loss. I'm not discounting your pain. But yo, if you're in Christ Jesus, heaven is always in front of you. Therefore, the best is always yet to, oh, come on, somebody. The best is yet to come. But the other great statement on the other side, it just took me back. It said, to God be the glory. I thought, what what incredible statements to come in to gather to worship week in and week out and for your eyes to be drawn to these massive phrases, the best is yet to come and to God be the glory. Listen to me, everything about my life, everything about my life, I want it to have that phrase attached to it. You know, when you think about your legacy, Legacy is what you leave here on the earth. What do you want your legacy to be? I want my legacy to be that everything that I did and everything that I touched gave God glory. My story is for his glory. When I think about the Voo Church community, we start talking about vision and where we're going and projects and what we want to accomplish and what we want to do. All of it's very, very exciting, but I sure hope that everybody who's a part of our community, I sure hope that they know that the statement that we are after, the phrase that we long for, the purpose, the mission of our church is one simple phrase, to God be the glory. I want God to get glory out of our gatherings. I want God to get glory out of our crews. I want God to get glory out of our serving, out of our worship. I want God to get glory out of our giving. It's all about Him. Honor, worship, praise. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and He deserves all the glory. That's our mission. To God be the glory. Whatever I touch, whatever I do, let it be to the glory of God. You see, at Vu Church, we do not want to be an overnight success. What we do want to be is a community that has an overtime impact. I think we can do it because we have a just cause. And you are gaining gradually. Someone say, I'm growing. growing. Gradually. Gradually. Because all of us... (laughs) are living this life on mission so that all those people out there can take that same long walk home that we all took before. Can you see it? (laughs) To God be the glory. We're gonna play the long game. We're not just in it for our life. We're in it for the generations to come. Today, our text is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and it's a fascinating text that I want to take a few moments just to break down and try to encourage you before we get ready to give and before we get ready to release what God has placed in our hand. As we release it today, I believe it's going to help us fulfill what's in the heart of our church. 1 Corinthians 3 is Paul writing to the church in Corinth, and the challenge that they have in the church at Corinth right now is that the people are divided over kind of a silly subject. 
their division has to do with the fact that uh, there's these two preachers, these two leaders. One, his name is Paul that most of us know very well. He wrote most of the New Testament. But there's this other up-and-coming, young, maybe trendy, <laughs> impactful, sharp, young communicator who's starting to gain a following. His name is Apollos. Not Apollo Creed from Rocky, Apollos, the preacher. Paul certainly has a large following, but now Apollos is starting to gain a following. And if you can believe it, this doesn't sound like anybody you know, they're actually getting divided over who is better. Which ministry is more impressive? Which ministry is more effective? Which ministry they should follow? And Paul is coming into the scene and he is doing some real pastoral work. He's like, yo, chill out, okay? You need to understand uh, that you do not need to get lost in this silly conversation for both Apollos and I are on the same side. In fact, neither one of us are to get any type of glory for we like all of God's leaders are simply servants of the Lord. And at Voo Church, we give honor where honor is due. But come on, somebody, there is only one who gets the glory, and his name is Jesus Christ. And Paul begins to pastor, and he begins to challenge, and he's saying, no, 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 you're getting this wrong. You're wasting your time. And if you don't learn this principle right now, what you'll start to do is you will start to think that other leaders or other people or other persons are the source of your faith. And any time you start to think another man or another woman is the source of your faith, it will always lead to division. But every time you come back to your senses and recognize that only Jesus is the source of your faith, it doesn't lead to division. It leads to unity. And Paul's just like, no, 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 no. You need to realize that this is all about God getting his glory. And there's only one that gets it. He's the source of our faith. His name is Jesus Christ. At Vu Church, we have seven values, but the first value is the most important. It's that Jesus is our message. We don't have a message of mind over matter. We have a message of faith over unbelief, and that is the message of the cross. Repent and be saved. Turn from your wicked ways and turn towards a savior, one who loves you, who has a plan for you, who wants to touch you and transform you. And it's good news, good news for all. But what you'll notice is that Paul, as he begins to teach all throughout 1 Corinthians 1, 2, and 3, he, he, he certainly is not trying to get any glory from the story, but he doesn't shy away from the fact that God has allowed others to play a part in the process of the miracle. We, we got to recognize this, right? because I wanna make sure I'm teaching correctly to our church because today is a fundamental day, not just for this year, but for the years to come that we adopt and we see what Paul is doing here. Paul doesn't want the glory from the story, but Paul also wants to lay out, he doesn't shy away from the fact that Paul and Apollos both were a part of the process of the miracle. There's only one who performs the miracle, that would be God. God's the performer, but you and I get to be a part of the process. And Paul starts laying out, I think, in just verse 6, a very clear picture of what I would call the elements or the words of playing the long game, the elements of how the miracle comes to pass. And I think these three words I want to show you are fitting on this day as we get ready to give sacrificially that we would recognize that God invites us into his story, not for our glory, but for his glory, that as we release our offering, as we release our faith, it all goes to the glory of God. Come on, somebody, if you believe it. Come on, if you believe it, somebody put your hands together today. Watch this, Paul right here, he picks up 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. I'm just gonna go real quick here. Paul says, I planted seed. I planted seed. The first word I, I want us to land on is this word planting. Everyone say planting. Planting, uh, planting is, is very, very important because in so many ways, even what I'm doing right now with you is that very word. It's, it's planting that as a pastor, I'm planting the word of God into your heart. Why? So that we might reap a harvest of faith in your life. Planting is very important. To plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. I mean, just, just think about it. Like 
to actually put seed in the ground is an indicator that you have a hope, <laughs> that you actually have a vision. Uh, honestly, when I plant, planting is evidence of my confidence. How many know? When I plant apple seeds, I have confidence that I'm going to get an apple tree. In fact, I would ask a question today. Um, if you're not planting, I wonder, are you believing? Do you have a hope? Do you have a vision? Do you see beyond today? Are you just caught up and locked in this moment or do you see beyond yourself? Do you see beyond Tuesday or Wednesday or this week or next week or this month or next month? I think the long game, if we really dive into it, it's not just about seeing towards next month or next year or even 10 years, but I think if we're gonna have a real just cause, it's about thinking about the generations to follow. I'm telling you, planting is evidence of my confidence. When I plant a seed, I have confidence that I'm going to reap a harvest. Why? Because what you sow is what you reap. So I wonder, what are you sowing? Because many times we just get caught up in sowing all the wrong stuff. We're all sowing something, right? <laughs> if you don't like what you're reaping, check what you're sowing. Some of us in this place, when it comes to planting, you're like, I don't know if I'm planting. You're planting something. You, you got to check what, what are you planting? Some of us are just, it's the wrong stuff. We're, we're sowing discord. We're sowing gossip. We're sowing abuse. We're sowing addiction. We're sowing sin. We're sowing procrastination. Listen to me. Whatever you sow, you will reap. <laughs> I love today because today is a massive day where we rally the troops, we rally the church, we've been ramping up for it, we've been doing bricklayer dinners, we've been doing bricklayer lives, we've been showing you the website, we've been trying to get you ready to actually release something. And today is all about making a financial seed, putting a seed into the ground financially to reap a harvest in the kingdom of God. But you better get a bigger revelation that you don't just plant your finances and you don't just sow seed, no. Everything in your life is seed. Yes. What are you sowing? Listen, when you sow encouragement, you reap courage. Yes. When you sow joy, yes. you reap strength. Yes. When you sow unity, you reap peace. Yes. When you sow forgiveness, come on, you reap freedom. Yes. Life is an echo. Yes. What you send out comes back. Yes. So what are, what are you planting? What are you putting in the ground? What is your hope? What is your vision? What's the future that you're seeing today? I think many times the reason why we don't plant is because we, at times, underestimate the power of the seed. Like planting, if we're really going to be honest, is like not complicated at all. It's not complicated. It's really simple. But I suppose maybe the simplicity is what prevents us from stepping into it. Because a seed, right? Like it's just small and it's puny. And it's meager. And it's little. I mean, in all reality, seed is cheap all by itself. You know, like it's, it's cheap. Like it just seems so insignificant, doesn't it? Just little, it's like, I don't think it'll matter. And so what do we do? We, we hoard our seed. We, we keep our seed. We, we, we never plant the seed. But the whole thing about the seed, the power of the seed is what? Is its potential. It's not what it is today. It's what it can become tomorrow. But the only way it can become something tomorrow is that it has to be released today. Seed is cheap. Soil is expensive. You heard me last week talk about one of the great initiatives uh, for Vu Church, and, and that is that we're, we're about to, we're purchasing this, this beautiful property in the design district. And how many know, uh, the building is nice. I'm gonna share a whole lot more about it today. The, the building's nice, but, but the ground that it's on, the, the, the property value of where it's at, the soil that it's on happens to be some really expensive soil that it wouldn't really matter what the structure on top of it looked like, it would still have value. Yeah. 
See, today you might be here and you might be going, what I have is little. What I have doesn't seem to be very much. My seed is not much. I just got a little bit. I just got a, I just got a little bit. But I want to encourage you. I believe in the soil of Vu Church. I believe this is healthy soil. And if you'll put your little into healthy soil, I believe you're going to reap a harvest that you can only begin to imagine. You have no idea what God has in store when you match your seed in healthy soil. It's just, it's just healthy soil. Listen to me. Do not underestimate your seed based upon its size. Don't do it. It's a small key that unlocks a big door. I think a lot of us right now, we got some doors in our life. And we have convinced ourselves that the only way to knock that door down is I got to get some kind of big tool. But come on, think about it. Think about the biggest door there is. How many know there's always a little key that has the power to unlock that big door? I'm telling you today, it's a little key that unlocks a big door. What you got today can become a lot tomorrow if you sow it, if you release it, if you plant it. Not just your treasure, your time your talents, your personality. What are you, what are you planting? Because God's inviting you into a story. It's all for his glory, but he's saying, I'm gonna let you co-labor in this. I'm gonna collaborate with you in this, but you have to understand this word planting. You, you've got to release something. You have to put something in the ground. Here's what's crazy. That same key that has the power to unlock that big door, it's that same key that has the power to prevent you from walking through that passage. That same key can lock the door. And that's how seed works. You either use it or you waste it. These are not my words, These are the teach this is the teaching of Jesus. Think about the parable of the talents. One guy's got five, other guy's got three, and comes back and he's like, you know, what'd you do with it? And they all multiplied it, except the guy who got one. The guy who got one said, you know what I did? I buried it, I maintained it, I held it for you, I kept it for you. And guess what he did? He said, give me that thing back. He said, you're out. He called him wicked and lazy. And read the story. It's crazy. He cast him out. But what does he do? He takes the one and gives it to the others who multiplied it. Some of you, oh man, I don't want to. <laughs> you're looking around going, why do they keep getting more? Why do they keep getting promotion? Why do they keep getting up? How do they keep getting a bigger life and a bigger world? Maybe it's because they got a revelation that faith doesn't maintain. Faith multiplies. And the only way you can multiply something is you got to release what you got. For when you release it, you can receive even more. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise. It's about planting. It's about putting something in the ground. It might look small, but I'm going to give what I got because what I got is going to become a lot. All the flowers of tomorrow are in the seeds of today. You want the beauty, but you don't want to plant. You don't want to plant. It's incredible because I'm excited. I'm building your faith right now because Vu Church is on the precipice of our greatest miracle yet that we are purchasing our very first property. I shared about it last week, but this is a 6,000 square foot space in the design district. We're gonna show some of the video of this. I just want you to catch this for a moment. I'm gonna tell you the story at the end of the message today about this building and how God, I believe, has designed this moment and orchestrated this moment. But this is a 6,000 square foot space that is gonna become the brand new ministry center. These are 30 foot ceilings. We're gonna add a mezzanine to get more square footage, but we're gonna be able to house college and staffing and servant leaders equipping, and we're gonna help people. And I just want you to see this right now. You're kind of catching what it is today, but I'm just telling you, as people plant, as people give, as people release what they have, it might look like a little, it might seem like it's not very much, but I'm telling you that, right there, this, this is the third floor, that right there, that, 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 that terrace, that is about to become, you'll see this. I want you to see what we're gonna build. I want you to get a vision of where we're going. I want you to understand that this garden that we are pouring into, I'm telling you what, we have a hope. And as we plant, it's the evidence of our confidence that we actually believe that this is just the start. And maybe you're watching right now and you're going, I know, but you guys need a worship center. Why are you guys building a ministry center? You guys actually need
need a place to gather all those thousands of people. That's because you still don't have a revelation of what planting looks like. We understand that what we got today, we're gonna sow it, and what God's gonna give us tomorrow is gonna be so much better. It's gonna be so much bigger. It's about planting. But listen to me. My goal and my hope today, as I'm inspiring you and challenging you, we only do this once a year. So if you're going, these people talk too much about money, I would just say this probably isn't the church for you because we don't talk so much about money, but we do on this day. And if you're really worried about talking about money, maybe it's because money is a God in your life. Maybe it's making you uncomfortable because that's the thing that's controlling you. And maybe you need to be offended a little bit more as I talk about money because that's the thing that until I break through in that space in your life, you're never gonna walk in the full freedom of what God has for you. It's not bad to have money. It's just bad when money has you. Yeah. And so today I'm trying to raise two and a half million dollars. But before we even receive the offering this week alone, just to get you, I want you to see this because this is not something we're teaching you. It's a revelation that we as a leadership team have. This week alone, we have put seed in the ground all over the city. You already did this. You didn't even know it. You're going to work all week. You were just hanging out with your friends. You had no idea about the radical act of generosity that you were participating in. We need two and a half million dollars. So I say, you know what? We got to put $250,000 into our city. So this week we gave $250,000 away to nonprofits, to local organizations, to church plants, to mission field. Why? Because I planted seed. I planted seed. I planted seed. You know when the best time it is to plant a tree? 20 years ago. You know when the next... Best time it is to plant a tree? Today. It's planting. It's planting. Paul said, I planted seed. But watch, we're just breaking down verse six. He said, but Apollos, Apollos watered it. Apollos is this young preacher who's coming up, who's getting the following, his Instagram accounts popping off. And people are like, I don't know about that church. Those guys, he's got this thing going in. Paul's like, no, 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 we are just all on the same team. And don't be impressed with any of it. Please don't be impressed with Voo Church. Please don't be impressed with any of us as leaders. We are just servants. We get to lead, but, but we're in it with you. It's planting, but the second word you gotta catch is this word tending, tending, tending. You can't just plant a garden. You gotta tend to a garden. You gotta tend to it. I'm telling you, um, Paul started it, Apollos continued it. See, see, this is how the church of Jesus Christ moves forward. Just in case you're wondering, Vu Church did not start this thing called the church. I know we've got new believers in our community. No, no, no. we are continuing that which started 2,000 years ago. In fact, the way I like to look at it is that truly we are in a relay race of faith. And from generation to generation, the baton of faith is passed. You ever seen a relay race as they come and they, they make the pass in the transition and then the next group starts running with it? I suppose what I'm wondering today with my generation and with our church, I wonder, are we gaining ground for the kingdom or are we losing ground? Because it's not about you and me. It's about this race that we're in. And right now the baton is in our hand. And as we give and as we sow, what we're saying is, is that we want to gain ground for the kingdom. I don't just want to start something. I want to continue something. See, many have faith to start. Few have faith to continue. I could get you excited about planting all day long, but that's where people miss it. They plant, they don't tend. They plant, they don't water. Anybody can start a marriage. I wonder, can you continue your marriage? Anybody can start a family. I wonder, it takes a real man, it takes a real woman to continue being a mom, continue being a dad. Anybody can start a business. Oh, it takes a real entrepreneur. It takes a real creative to say, I'm gonna continue in this business, come hell or high water. Anybody can start. I'm looking for some people who can continue. I'm not going to start giving. I'm going to continue giving. Giving is not just something I do one time a year. This is the lifestyle that I have adopted as I follow Jesus. This is who I am. I'm not just a starter. I'm a continuer. But if you're going to continue, you're going to have to learn this word about tending. Because anybody can start a garden. Anyone can plant some seed. But man, 
If you're going to see that thing really grow, you're going to have to learn how to tend to it. The truth is, is that tending is simply hard work. Because after you plant that seed, Apollos had to come around. After, after Paul came in there and gave him all that doctrine and said all that radical stuff, taught him all those things, you can't do this, you got to say it that way, then Apollos had to come over and continue and actually had to work out the teaching and he had to tend to the garden. This is what pastors do. This is what crew leaders do. This is what team leaders are doing. This is what the people of God do, that we come around the seed and we got to water the seed. We got to look, oh, what? We got to weed it. There's some weeds getting, whoa, oh, that's toxic. That's not good thinking. Let me get that. I got to prune some stuff. You got to understand, it's not just about starting stuff as you get into 2021. There's some stuff you better stop as well. You got to prune some stuff out. Oh, wait, we got to get some fertilizer in here. I don't like fertilizer, manure, ew. That's gross. I know, but nothing is wasted with God. Even some of the garbage, even some of the stuff that you've gone through that feels like fertilizer, that feels like manure. God's like, no, 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 no. I need it to tend to my garden. You got to check up on it. How, how's, how's the seed doing? And it's just, it's hard work. Tending is about giving the garden what it needs when it needs it. To God be the glory. I planted seed. Apollos watered seed. We're part of the process. Yeah. Voo Church, we're a part of the process. Yeah. I know we're not the biggest church. We're not the most known church. And we're not the most spiritual church. And we're not the best church. And, but we're a part of it. Yeah. We're a part of God's kingdom. And I think we get to decide how fast we want to get there. I think we get to decide how much we want to do. I think we get to decide how much ground we want to gain yes. in this life. Yes. The reality of it is, is that tending to the garden is hard work. Yes. I can try to make you laugh and I can try to make that sound sexy, but it's just, it's just hard. Yes. I saw this Instagram post circulating. I think others of you might have seen it. I don't know who authored it, but it just spoke to me. I'm sure it spoke to many of you, but somebody wrote this beautiful little caption. And the idea was, is that life is hard. I hope you know, life is not easy. So why not choose your hard? How many know marriage is hard, but divorce is hard too. Choose your hard. Obesity is hard, but being fit is hard also. Choose your hard. Debt is hard, but being financially disciplined is hard too. Choose your heart. Communication is hard, but not communicating is hard. Choose your heart. Life's not easy, but you can choose your heart. So choose wisely because one leads to life and one leads to death. And when you tend it, I'm telling you what, things begin to grow. But I think many people, the reason why they don't tend to the garden, they don't tend to the seed, maybe some of us were good at starting, but the reason why we don't continue is because when it comes to tending, it's not that it's just hard. It's that, have you ever noticed that tending feels like waiting? Get that in your spirit there. Tending feels a lot like waiting. And what I have watched so many people on the faith journey is that they're working hard, but they're not seeing results. They're working hard, but they're not seeing growth. They're not seeing increase. And so what they do is they give up. They quit. That's why the scripture says, do not grow weary in doing good. For why? For at the proper time, you will, here we go, reap a harvest. If doing good was easy, you wouldn't grow weary. It turns out doing good is really hard. But as I'm doing a hard thing and I don't see results and I don't see growth, I have this temptation to quit because I've waited too long. But you got to get it in your spirit today. Tending is waiting. Tending is waiting. Genesis chapter 8. We read the story of Noah. Noah was one righteous man on the earth. God was upset with mankind's wickedness. And God looks down upon mankind and says, I'm going to punish the earth. The way I'm going to punish the earth is I'm going to send a flood. But he speaks to Noah and says, I'm going to spare you and your family if you'll build an ark. There is a picture that God says, I have a provision. I have a rescue plan contingent upon your obedience. Understand the ark is a picture of Jesus Christ. It's a type. It's a shadow. 
that in this ark, these righteous ones are saved and spared from this catastrophe. It is a foreshadow of you and I that in Jesus, we have an ark that we will not face God's wrath. We will not face God's punishment because we are covered by his righteousness when we simply believe and obey. Noah, after 40 days and 40 nights of being in this ark with the rain pouring, finally the flood, it, it goes back and they get out of the boat and God begins to make promises to Noah. And he says something in Genesis chapter eight, verse 22, that I think is so applicable to what we're talking about today. He says this, as long as the earth endures. Come on, we love that word at Vu Church. Someone say endure. As long as the earth endures, as long as it lasts, as long as it doesn't give up, as long as it doesn't give out, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. God is saying, as long as the earth lasts, there will be seed time and harvest. You should apply this to your life. As long as you're gonna last, as long as you're gonna endure, if you're gonna endure, if you're gonna last, you better understand that we serve the God of seasons. And our God, he operates how? Seed plus time equals harvest. Planting plus tending equals harvest. I wanna to speak to someone today that feels convinced that your waiting is a waste. Oh friend, I got news for you. If the vision seems slow in coming, wait! Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Don't give up now, keep on waiting. That's how you endure. You're not wasting time waiting on God. Let that be a word as you step into this Christmas season. Oh, I've been waiting, I've been waiting, I've been waiting. It is not wasted with God. In fact, with God, nothing is wasted. You're not waiting, you're tending. You're tending. I know a little bit about waiting. I could take it down memory lane about all sorts of things we've had to wait for. But I caught a revelation when Don Shree and I were on a journey of infertility, eight years believing, praying. I knew all about planting. It just so happens I learned a lesson about tending as well. We discovered that a waiting season is not a wasted season with God. I don't know what you're waiting for today, but I prophesy over your life. If you don't quit, if you hang in there, I just believe seed plus time equals harvest. After eight years of journeying, my wife and I, we were thrilled when we discovered that God had given us the miracle we had always longed for, our firstborn son, Wyatt Wesley Wilkerson. January of 2018, he is the pride of our life. We love that boy, but you gotta love God, right? Because he gives you double for your trouble. I was, I was, we learned how to be fine and okay with no baby. And then when he gave us a baby, we were like, yo, this is, we got the cherry on top. And God's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm not just the God of enough. I'm the God of more than enough. And I'm the God who's gonna actually show up. And I know you've been waiting on this and I care about what you pray about and I care about what you dream about. And so uh, I'm gonna give you a second born son. And I didn't know, but God gave us the second boy, Wild Wesley Wilkerson, October of 2019. The kid is a savage. <laughs> he, he has a grip. I mean, honestly, I have a scratch on my forehead. They had to put some makeup on it because this one-year-old is like an MMA fighter. I don't know. We named him prophetically, apparently. Wild is wild. But I don't know what it is about God because God's like, yo, you thought you were good with your two boys, but you don't know who I am and you don't know what I can do. And Rich, I know what you've prayed for and I know what you've longed for. And so check it out. In July of 2021, baby girl Wilkerson is coming into this earth. It's not wasted while you wait. Nothing is wasted with God. 
God doesn't waste anything. God doesn't waste a single season. God continues to move. All I would challenge you with today is that if you're out there and you're watching right now, I'm encouraging you right now that while you wait, will you keep on watering? While you wait, will you keep on tending? While you're waiting, will you keep on believing? While you're waiting, will you keep on weeding? While you're waiting, will you keep on fertilizing? While you're waiting, keep on pruning. While you're waiting, keep checking in. Because nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted. Help me out, Carlos. Give me a little more keys there tonight, brother. Nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted. Paul, he says, I planted seed. Apollos watered it. Paul says it's about planting. It's about tending. But lastly, I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God made it grow. Someone say, but God made it grow. So neither the one who plants nor he who waters is anything. We have a culture of honor. I'm gonna always believe in that. But hear me loud and clear. I'm nothing. My wife is nothing. Our team, we're nothing in comparison to the glory of God. We give each other honor, but we only give one glory. We only give one praise. We only give one adoration. We only stand in awe of one. He says, nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who planted and the man who waters have one purpose. Someone say one purpose. And each will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. God's building. Church is not a place. Church is a people. Today we're getting ready to give and we're not going to build a literal building to house our worship services in yet. But just because we don't have that doesn't make us any less of a church. It's about planting. It's about tending. But lastly, it's about harvesting. It's about harvesting Paul, he's breaking it down. He's teaching so good. He said, I planted, Apollos watered, but only God makes it grow. He, he wants to make it very, very clear for each and every one of us. He wants you to understand just how vivid this picture is. Yo, you can plant and you can tend, but you better understand there is only one who brings the increase. There is only one who brings the growth. This does not about any man or any woman. This is about God himself. It is God who makes it grow. But I love... Paul, once again, because he's breaking it down. He's making it very clear. This is all for God's glory. But he doesn't discount the fact that although it's for God's glory, God invites you and I. This is where I get so excited. He invites us into the story. He gives you a role. He gives you a purpose. He gives you a place. He lets you have a position. He says, you get to plant. What, what if we got that at Voo Church? Oh man, I get to plant. I get to give my talents. I get to show up and serve. I get to bring people to Jesus. I get to give my fight. I get to do this. He says, he says, you get to tend. You get to water. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I get to be involved in the hard work. I get to be involved of the labor. I get to be involved. God's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to come into my story. You get to play a part in the process. I'm the one who's going to perform the miracle, but I'm going to let you be a part of the process. Whew. Has there ever been something that you just wanted to do really bad that was like really cool and you were just happy to be a part of the process? I remember one time I had this friend who's a hip hop artist. I won't tell you his name. But he said, Rich, you want to come into the studio? You got any uh, thoughts around this song? I'm not a hip hop artist. But I was excited to be a part of the process. There's really only one condition to be a part of the process. It's like really one word. 
I mean, aside from love Jesus, but like, what's the next word? It's generosity. Because you'll never plant and you'll never sow if you're not generous. You'll never tend and you'll never water. You'll never weed. You'll never do the hard work. You'll never wait around. You'll never continue. You'll always be gone for the short game and for the short term and for the, for the short reward and for the immediate success and for the immediate victory and for the triumph and for the, for the excitement. You're gone. Unless generosity is your privilege. Generosity, by definition, is to give more than what is required. I'm generous, really? What's your measuring stick? I'm just nice. I love, it's nice to be nice. It's kind to be kind. (laughs) But generosity is to give more than what is required. I personally believe in the principle of the tithe, 10%. It's an Old Testament principle. We don't have to take time right now to teach about it or go back and forth on it, but I know this. I know that in the New Testament, when I encountered grace and I see Zacchaeus in Luke 19, he wasn't debating whether or not he should tithe. He was going, no, I caught a revelation of generosity and all those people I cheated, I'm gonna pay them back four times the amount. That's like, that's radical generosity. He didn't say that, you know what he said? He said, I'm gonna give 50% of my wealth to the poor. It's to give more than what is required. It turns I have to into I get to. I don't have to plan. In fact, today, if that's what you're feeling right now about giving, please don't. In fact, the scripture is very clear. Do not give under compulsion, but we should be cheerful givers. There's there's been a couple offerings I've given before. I was cheerful, but I was crying. (laughs) I feel you. It's all right to cry, but you gotta know your heart. (gasps) I'm so happy. But if you have to, don't, 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 don't. That's not the gospel. That's not the good news. See, you can't spell the gospel without G. I don't know why I looked at Luke right there, but it just got me. You can't spell the gospel without the word generosity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life what if i told you you've never looked more like god than when you're generous generous god says i'm inviting you into the process don't don't make a big deal about men and women honor them good job hey You did great singing up there today, Zach. Great, what a gift you have. Oh my goodness, that was amazing design, Caitlin. Kat, you got an incredible gift to write. D, wow, thank God we got someone like you with a brain around the spreadsheets. Oh my goodness, Chris, your ability to lead and to organize and to operate, and Adrian, your ability to contextualize and teach, and Manu, who the heck are you? You make us all feel like we have no gifting whatsoever. (laughs) Honor them, but we don't bow to them. We don't give them glory. We give only God glory. To God be the glory. Live a life of generosity so others can live a life of opportunity. Please understand it. Our generosity is not for your blessing. That would be called a byproduct of the generosity. That is not the intention. That is not the reason. That is not the motivation. That is not why we give. We give to bless God, and we give to bless others. When I am blessed in return, it is, it is simply a byproduct of the giving. Live a life of generosity so others can live a life of opportunity. I don't know today, but your $100, your $1,000, your $10,000, your $250,000, it will not just be about your blessing, but rather it's gonna open up the doors for others to meet Jesus. It's not gonna get you to heaven, but I got news, it's gonna get somebody else to heaven. And when I start thinking about generosity, when I start thinking about creating opportunity for others. I think about my friend, 
Rajni. And Rajni's in the studio with us here today. She's sitting on the front row. But we've been teasing this story a little bit for the last few weeks. And last week I, I told it for the first time. But Rajni is the owner and the builder of the Design District building. And yeah, come on, we can give her a big round of applause. Luke, go help him out. And I want to tell you Rajni's story today because her story has impacted not just me, but even you. This building that we're getting is completely on the back of her generosity, from her planting, from her tending. Today, we're gonna be reaping a harvest, but it's not because of our labor, it's because of labor that began 30 years ago. Rajni's from India. As she tells her story, she had an arranged marriage. She was madly in love with her husband. They were Hindu. They moved here to Miami and he was working for a long time at Xerox. Eventually he started, he was an entrepreneur, he started a business where he was selling carpets, designer carpets. And in his early 30s, he ended up contracting cancer and he ended up passing away, leaving Rajni and two little boys. Rajni went back to India to mourn with her family and as they were there, her family said, what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? And her husband had left her a small inheritance $50,000 $50,000 for the boys and $50,000 for Rajni. And Rajni made a decision because she plays the long game. I'm not spending any of that right now. That's for my boys and that's for me. That's for our future. I can't touch it right now. I got to save it. I got to invest it. We can't spend it. She said, I'm going to go back to America and I'm going to try to make ends meet. And so she came over here, early 30 year old widow with two little boys, and she just started grinding, just kind of started hustling. She went and found the leftover rugs that her husband had, a small inventory. And she started taking those rugs. And what she really did was that she pivoted the business and she invested. She, she started taking the rugs to the designers themselves. This is a true creative right here. <laughs> Creatives aren't people that can paint necessarily. They're not people that just dance necessarily. We love those. Creatives are problem solvers. And she started taking these rugs and she started taking them to business and said, you know what I'm gonna do? You don't have to even come to me. I'll come to you. She was like the first Uber Eats, but for rugs. <laughs> she would bring them and before you know it, the, the, the business began to grow and it began to flourish. She talks about years and years of never going out with a girlfriend, years and years of literally work and her boys. As her boys started to grow, she wanted to find a community and She was at a luncheon one day. It happened to be a campus crusade luncheon where she ended up meeting somebody. She was still a Hindu and she enjoyed the friend that she met. I love this friend. This friend said, hey, why don't you come to church with me? And she started going to a church, one of the great churches here in Miami, Christ Journey Church, led by Pastor Bill White. We love that team over there. And Rajni just started going to church with this friend. And if you can believe it, Rajni was going for years and was not a Christian. Talk about a community that says you can belong before you believe. We'll play the long game with Raji. Who knows? Who knows? We'll just, yeah, keep coming. You're invited to this community. Raji's boys began to grow and they went into the youth ministry. And Raji at the time was so afraid of American culture. What she had heard about the youth was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And so she said, you can go to the youth ministry, but I'm going to be a youth leader. But the only thing is Raji isn't even a Christian. So she's serving in the youth ministry. After years and years, one of her friends gives her a book. It was a book about Jews for Jesus. Don't you love faith? Don't you love the crossroads? In real time, it looks so messy and complicated and it looks so twisted, but looking back, God is putting pieces together. How does a Hindu woman from India read a book about Jews for Jesus. And in it, she gets a revelation around the statements of Christ, which so many have found to be so polarizing, where he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. But somehow this day as she read it, and as it was explained to her, it wasn't exclusive, it was specific. For how many of you know today that if you had cancer in your body, and I had the cure, and there was only one cure. How many know it would be pretty selfish of me not to give it to you? 
And that was the day that she began to surrender her life to Jesus. About 30 years ago, the design district was not what the design district is today. How many know you've got to play the long game? Some of you are like, yo, man, but all I can afford is like this one bedroom apartment. Start here. God will take you there. She bought the property 30 years ago for $50,000. I can't teach you how to grow overnight. I can teach you how to grow over time. Because some 30 years later, that $50,000 little seed in the ground and that little rug business turned into a multi-million dollar business and that property turned into a valuation of seven to $9 million. And in 2015, Rajni caught a vision. I don't know if you recall, but Voo Church launched in 2015. We didn't have a studio. I didn't have a cool blazer yet. We were just in the apartment. And it was small and it was seed and it looked like much, but we were planting and we were tending and we were planting and we were tending and we didn't know it. But just down the street, there was an ex Hindu woman who now is a radical follower of Jesus, who's getting a download from the Holy Spirit that she's supposed to liquidate her business, level her building that she's presently in and begin to construct with her own money. You wanna talk about Noah? She starts constructing a building with her own money. Friends, this is, this is borderline crazy. And as she began to build, she probably felt like Noah because people came around left and right saying, what are you doing? Imagine Noah out there. Hadn't rained ever. Rain's coming. No, it's not, bro. (laughs) That was Rajni constructing an ark, constructing a space. God spoke to her that you're supposed to build a space, 2015, for my glory, for my glory. You don't believe me? Look look at these photos. This is in 2015. We're at the apartment. We're, We're launching at JDD. They're building. Look what they're doing. They're putting scriptures on the building from the beginning of the foundation. These are women right here writing out scriptures on the foundation of the building. I don't even know Raji. She doesn't even know me. She don't know about food church. She don't know what we're doing. We're planting. We're tending. But she's planting and she's tending. She's constructing a... She's writing scriptures. What are we talking about? She builds this building and one day you'll see it on the back of the building. Is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Trust in the Lord with all all your heart, with all your heart. It was Jesus who said that where your heart is there, your treasure will be also. Trusting the Lord with all your heart, it is not just about singing. It is not just about attending. It's not just about showing up. If you want to trust God with all your heart, it's going to cost you something at some point. There's going to be an investment made. And sometimes it looks crazy. Sometimes it looks peculiar. But there's Rajni. She's building some hardware. There's a bunch of kids in an apartment. And we're building some software. And we don't know it but our God who works it all together. You got Paul who's planting. You got Apollos who's watering. You got Rajni who's starting. You got Vu who's continuing. I'm telling you what, it's not for our glory. It's for God's glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. You live a life of generosity so others can live a life of opportunity. 
in five years of building and tending, somehow in 2020, in what might go down in history as one of the most difficult years humanity has seen in the last 50 years, somehow you're telling me in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of the most dire season we've ever walked through, that we're about to step into a building that we can acquire for $3.6 million that has the day that we signed the papers, an equity value of $7 million. Friends, I don't call that a coincidence. I don't call that little. I call that miraculous. And I give God all the glory and all the praise and all of the honor. All of the honor. And today, Rajni, we're here in this studio. There'll be thousands that are gonna watch this online. People in Silver Spot today, people at Jungle Island all day long. The VOOC community is thousands and thousands of people, not just here locally in Miami, but around the world. And today on behalf of all of those people, so many that you'll never meet, we say thank you for living a life of generosity, for planting and for tending so that we could reap the harvest. I believe and I declare that thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives are gonna be impacted from the brand new VU Church Ministry Center, the lighthouse in the design district. And we have to look back and we have to say, thank you for playing your part. Thank you that you were excited to be a part of the process. We honor you today. We make some noise for Rajni. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. It's his story. He gets the glory. Today, we're gonna take a moment and I want us to reflect on what you already did this week. Generosity is our privilege at Voo Church. This week, hundreds of thousands of dollars were already released before we received the offering. It's on purpose. We want seed in the ground. You're going, but Rich, aren't you trying to raise money? Yeah, but we trust God more than we trust your pocketbook. So I want you to see what God did this week. And as we're watching this, I just want you to consider that there is really no gift too small and no gift too big. God can use it. I pray from our community that we would be a people that would say, to God be the glory. We just want Jesus. Why don't you check out what God did this week at VU, and then I will come and close the service. It's going to be a great day. What are we doing today? Hey, today we're going around our city blessing some of our friends and yep. family in this community with some financial donations. Such a special day. Come on. These are organizations that we get to partner with week to week, month to month, and they have truly been making a difference in our community. That's right. Every year before Vision Sunday, we always believe in going first in our giving. And that's why we take a moment to give financially to these organizations that we partner with. The best part, they have no idea what's coming. Right. Let's go. go. On, let's go. Right. Seatbelts, everyone. <laughs> Right now, we are at the WOW Center where we are going to be blessing them with a financial donation on your behalf. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 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 I just want to take a moment to honor you and the WOW Center, all the amazing things that you all are doing here in South Florida. You are truly making a difference. And I know that this season, especially with COVID, has looked a lot different for you and has been a difficult season, but on behalf of VU Church and so many others, because generosity is our privilege, I want to present to you this check of $10,000. Thank you. Can we cheer? We're here with Jose at Gang Alternative. On behalf of Voo Church and on behalf of Pastors Rich and Don Cherie, we would love to bless Gang Alternative with a check for $5,000 so you all can continue doing some incredible work here in Miami. <laughs> oh, God bless you guys. Thank you. 
for us as a church, we're committed to helping people who are pushing the gospel forward. So we're so grateful for Open Doors. And really on behalf of Voo Church, on behalf of our pastors, Rich and Dontree, we want to give Open Doors a gift of $20,000 this year. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Voo Church. It's a surprise. <laughs> that, is, that is so awesome. You guys are awesome. My prayer for you guys is that the Lord will shock you <laughs> with how your desire to bless others, he turns it around. <laughs> And he blesses you, continues to bless you guys so much. Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas. I've tasted and seen, yet questioned it all, still you remain. Chased empty dreams, ran from your call, and turned back again. I know that um, this season of church planning can be a little bit of a difficult one, can be a challenging one. We wanted to make sure that you were able to launch in strength. We wanted to contribute to your vision. So we'd like to financially bless you with the gift of $20,000 to help you guys as you launch. Jeez, okay. Dang, that's honestly crazy. Uh, not expecting that at all. Wow. Um, thank you, man, for real. We want to present to you a donation of five thousand dollars to the organization so of great. one yeah. more child wow. we would like today on behalf of Mood church to bless you guys with a gift of ten thousand dollars to help further wow. help your mission come on man thank you bro that is just unbelievable you guys are just insane and we're just so we're, we're constantly shaking our heads at the faithfulness of God. I just wanted, on behalf of Voo Church, to present you guys with a donation of ten thousand dollars today. And... Virtual hug. <laughs> yeah, 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 virtual hugs. <laughs> We really are honestly just happy to see what you guys are doing in this city. You guys have been touching so many lives. On behalf of Voo Church, we wanted to bless you oh, with $20,000 yeah. to Miami Rescue Mission. It's just for you. We love you guys. We were this talking about how we were going to bless the community, and you come in and bless us. Wow. Yes. That's, yes. That's what it's all about. It just continues to go around.
Well, great job. What a beautiful song and a beautiful presentation. That was Ashley Lindor leading, honestly, a brand new song that Vu Worship just put together called Give Me Jesus. And we're excited to hear that in 2021. But today is a special day. And uh, Don Shree and I are here just today to say thank you to a generous church. Today, you're not giving to Don Shree and I. You're not giving to our staff or our team. You're giving into God's kingdom. And I would say that uh, it's never too late to do something amazing. And it's certainly never too early to start trying hard. Meaning maybe you're older today or maybe you're younger. God has a plan, God has a purpose for you. It's pretty remarkable to see what that church that began in the apartment five years ago has done, $2.3 million. That's cash given away in five years. Can we thank God for the generosity of our church? And our church is all about giving God glory. And today, if you're prepared to give, you can go to vuchurch.com slash give. You can actually designate your giving towards the Bricklayers Fund. There on the Bricklayers Fund, that money's going towards the vision. It's going towards uh, taking the baton of faith from Rajni and beginning to continue the work that she started with the Design District property, but so many other initiatives that we're gonna step into. My prayer, my belief, never really done this before, but I'm just believing two and a half million dollars. You're going, Rich, that's crazy. I know. But like my friend Mike Todd says, it's only crazy until it happens. And so why not speak it out? It's on God. It's for his glory. But as you're getting ready to give, I know there's people that are watching today. Um, you don't know Jesus. And right now he wants to meet you where you are. He wants to invade your life. If you've never surrendered, you know, you know, how, you, you know how you meet Jesus? You just, you receive what he's done. Because how many know God planted Jesus into the earth? <laughs> Jesus tended to the earth. He ministered and he served. And then when he died as a seed, he went into the ground. But three days later, he resurrected and he flourished into the greatest message we have, which is life and life more abundantly for all of us. And he did all the work. He did all the planting. He did all the tending. We get to reap his harvest. And it just starts with you believing in today. Just say, Jesus, I believe. I receive. You just pray that prayer. If you're spreading your life today to Jesus, right now you can just text. You can text that number as it comes up on the screen. Just text that word decided. It's coming up on the screen right there for you as you text it today, 786-755-3737. And we're believing today that we can partner with you. I'm gonna have Don Cherie close our stream today by praying for all of you who are getting ready to give sacrificially and generously. We're believing that this is gonna be our greatest offering yet. And we're believing that as we walk into 2021, we're gonna see our greatest miracles yet. And so Don Shree, would you pray, pray bold, and let's believe that God is gonna meet all of our needs. Wherever you are, will you join with, with me in prayer? God, I thank you so much for this moment. God, thank you that you've united our hearts. God, for a cause, a cause that is greater than ourselves. Or there are people that are far away from you, God, that you yes. wanna draw close that you wanna radically change from the inside out, Lord, that you are waiting to reveal your love and your peace and your strength and your healing power too. And God, we get to be a part of your story. Yes. And so God, I just pray for every single person, Lord, every single person who's praying with me today, Lord, that you would speak to us what we would give. Let every one of us not just spectate, yes. but let us participate. Let us bring the harvest in, God, by releasing what you've placed in our hand, by, by sowing yes. seed into the soil. God, there is a harvest. And God, you've called us to be workers. And so God, I just pray that you would bless every person listening, God, as they choose to walk in obedience and trust. God, I pray that you'd bless every person alone, listening in their car, in their workplace, in their home. God, I pray for every couple, Lord, who's choosing to trust you in their marriage. God, I pray for every single individual, Lord, that you would speak to them, you'd encourage them, you'd empower them to trust you. Let them sense your grace on their life. Thank you for this moment. Lord, we're committed to play the long game. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. We love all of you so much. We're believing the best really is yet to come. And uh, you know what, next week is Christmas and I can't wait to share with you. And uh, maybe you're watching today and you're like, yo, but I don't wanna text the number and I'm not ready to give. That's cool, you don't have to do anything you don't wanna do. All we would simply say is just keep coming back. We love you guys. God bless.